The Victron Serbo GX is an electrical system monitoring device that takes the inputs from Victron battery monitors, solar charge controllers, inverters, temperature sensors, tank sensors, and much more, and organizes that data for display on an external touchscreen or remotely through the Victron VRM portal. Now let's dive in a bit deeper and get into more of the specifics, starting with what's in the box. So in the box, we have the Serbo GX, the power cord, the ECAN terminators, terminal blocks for the relays, and terminal blocks for the tank sensors, temp sensors, and digital input terminals. Now there is a lot of info about the Serbo GX. The user manual for this device is over 100 pages long. The Serbo GX is basically a computer and trying to shoot a 10 minute video over how to use a computer means that we're only going to be covering the top layer of information for this component. Now, if you want to browse the user manual to see what else this thing is capable of that we don't quite get to in this video, I'll just leave a link to the user manual in the video description below. Also, if there is a specific feature or function that you'd like for me to discuss in a future video, just let me know in the comment section below so I can put it on my radar. Now, the best way for us to tackle as many functions as we can is to start from the outside and simply look at what ports are available. The four top leftmost terminals are the four CAN bus interfaces and are broken up into two BMS CAN ports and two VE CAN ports. BMS CAN is intended to be used with compatible managed battery systems such as Pylon Tech, BYD, Freedom One, and many others so that they can send their data for display through the Serbo GX. VE CAN is intended to be used for the Victron and Victron compatible VE CAN products such as the VE CAN MPPT solar charge controllers and the VE CAN Lynx shunt. The VE CAN connection allows these components to communicate with each other. These devices can be connected together in a daisy chain fashion, but you must use the included VE CAN terminators in the unused ports at each end. The VE bus ports allow the Serbo GX to communicate with and control Victron inverter chargers like the MultiPlus, the Quattro, or the Easy Solar. The BMS CAN, the VE CAN, and the VE bus connections all use RJ45 UTP cables. For best and most consistent results, you should really use the Victron brand of cables. And if you're having issues with a component and are using third-party cables, swapping to a Victron branded cable is a cheap place to start troubleshooting. These two USB outlets are for connecting any number of USB devices. Most useful would likely be the GXGSM for internet connectivity via a cellular network, uh, Wi-Fi dongles for extra Wi-Fi range since the Serbo GX has Wi-Fi built in, or even attaching a keyboard if you like. There's really quite a few options there. The remaining USB outlet noted with a little lightning bolt is for powering the Victron Touch 50 or Touch 70 display, which we'll talk about next. The HDMI terminal is for delivering the display data to the Victron Touch 50 or the Touch 70 display screen. Here's the Touch 70 7 inch screen. The Touch 50 is just a bit smaller at 5 inches, but that's really the only difference. The attached cord has an HDMI connection and a USB connection. The HDMI cord goes into the HDMI port on the Servo GX for data transmission and the USB cord goes into the USB connection for delivering power to the screen. And we will power all this up later so you can see what it looks like. Moving on. VE Direct allows the Serbo GX to communicate with battery monitors like the Victron BMV712 or the Smart Shunt. This allows the Serbo GX to see what those battery monitors see and so that the Serbo GX can forward the info from the battery monitors onto the Touch 70 display or the VRM portal, which we'll talk about later. VE Direct also allows for connection to the Victron MPPT solar charge controllers and essentially turns the Serbo GX into an active controller for all connected solar charge controllers through a function called DVCC, which stands for Distributed Voltage and Current Control. 
VVCC gives us helpful features like the ability to limit total system charging current if we, for example, have more solar than our batteries are allowed to charge at. DVCC is pretty powerful and there's a whole chapter dedicated to it in the user manual. Now there are only three VE Direct ports on the Servo GX, but more can be added by using a VE Direct to USB interface cord with a USB hub connected to one of the USB ports that we mentioned earlier. The last remaining port on this side of the Servo GX is the Ethernet port, which simply allows for a wired connection to a router or other appropriate wired local area network device. Now that's all the ports on the top side of the Servo GX, so let's flip around and go to the bottom side. The micro SD card slot is for updating the Servo GX when there's no possibility for direct internet connection. You can upload the firmware to a micro SD card and then the servo can update from that. The tank sensor inputs are for resistive tank senders like these float valve sending units. Now there are other types, but these are real common and super easy to set up and can be shown as freshwater, gray water, fuel, oil, black water, or even a live well. The temperature sensor inputs are for hardwired temperature sensors, which is a great option for displaying temperature information on the Touch 70 or the VRM portal, but it's also super powerful when using the temperature data to control a relay, which we'll talk about in a second. The digital inputs are for other compatible things that you want to monitor like door alarms, bilge alarms, bilge pumps, burglar alarms, smoke alarms, and all kinds of other fun things. The relay terminals here are for allowing the Servo GX to control an external relay to turn something on or off, depending on various set points that can be programmed within the Servo GX. For example, a generator auto start, a buzzer, a warning light, an alarm, a hot air vent, or really anything that a relay could normally control. And lastly is the power terminal, which uses the included wiring to connect to your battery or DC bus bar system, like your Lynx distributor. And that's all of the terminals. I think by going through what each of the terminals should connect to, we now have a pretty good grasp of the capabilities of the Servo GX. So let's go ahead and connect the Servo GX to power and see what the display looks like straight out of the box. Connect the HDMI to the HDMI port, and the USB to the USB power port, and the power Y to DC power, which will be your batteries or system bus bar like a Victron Lynx distributor, but for the sake of this tabletop demo, I'm using a DC power supply set to 12 volts. And after a few seconds of initial boot up, you will see the Servo GX home screen. Now since there's nothing really connected to the Servo GX, there's not much happening here. We can see our system flow of power page and an additional at a glance page. We also have our menu button down here that is absolutely loaded with options. Remember, this is basically a computer, so there's tons of settings, options, toggles, and such. If you wanna check out what all the available menu options are and what they do, check out chapter five of the user manual as it's very, very thorough and helpful. Now our Ford Transit camper conversion has a fully functioning Victron system with a Servo GX installed. So I'm gonna show you what shows up on the screen under various conditions. Our Victron MultiPlus inverter charger is connected to the VE bus port on the Servo GX with an RJ45 UTP cable. And when we are connected to shore power and charging, the Servo GX is showing that flow of power from shore power pedestal through the MultiPlus and into the batteries. If we disconnect from shore power and turn on a 120 volt load, the flow of power will change and show that we are pulling power from the batteries, inverting that power from DC to AC and feeding that to our 120 volt AC loads. If we connect a solar charge controller to the VE Direct port on the Servo GX with the VE Direct cable or the VE CAN port with an RJ45 cable, the Servo GX will start to show how much power our solar panels are pushing into the system to either charge our batteries or power our loads. Now, if we connect a battery monitor like a Link Shunt through VE CAN, 
or a BNB712 or smart shunt through VE Direct and turn on a DC load, the shunt will tell the Servo GX how much DC power is leaving the batteries. A common misconception about the Servo GX is that if you have a Servo GX in your system, you do not need a shunt, which is not necessarily true, especially if you're running a system with DC loads like in a camper, motorhome, or boat. You're going to need a shunt to provide the battery state of charge info to the Servo GX. If you have a system without DC loads, like in an off-grid cabin, you may not need a shunt because the MultiPlus or Quattro inverter chargers and the Victron solar charge controllers can tell the Servo GX how much power that they are using or contributing to the system and the Servo GX will work out and display the difference. And lastly, the VRM portal. If your Servo GX has an internet signal through Wi-Fi, Ethernet, or cellular network, you're going to be able to connect your Servo GX to the VRM portal and view your system status from anywhere in the world. So you can check in and make sure everything is working properly and get alerts for if something is wrong. Here is what the VRM portal looks like for our camper van. I currently have it connected to shore power and that's being shown on the VRM portal and it's parked in our shop so there's no solar coming in and since I'm not really using it at the moment because I'm sitting right here, there's no power going out. And if I need to change settings remotely, since I'm an administrator for my own account, I could navigate to the remote console and access everything that I could as if I was standing there at my Touch 70 display screen. Now here's another fun thing you can do. If we go to vrm.victronenergy.com world, you can check out all kinds of different systems from all over the world from users who have decided to make their system stats public. If I wanted to see what kind of power my buddy Mark from offgridsolutions.us is using or making, we can click over here in his area of the world and then click on his installation and see how much his solar is contributing to his system, how much power he is using through his inverters, and what some of the temperatures are that he has set up for his shop and his batteries. Now it's worth noting that you can't change the settings of these publicly viewable installations unless you're an authorized user for that specific account, which the account owner has to give permission for. It's also worth noting that you don't have to opt in to having your system publicly viewable if you don't want to. And that's all we have time to talk about in this video, and I hope you learned something. I know that I did while I was writing this script. The Servo GX is an optional but great addition to your Victron-based electrical system if you are a stats and data nerd like myself. If there are any specific Servo GX functions that you'd like for me to cover in a future video, let me know in the comments below and I'll put them on my radar. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.